he is easily one of the world's most respected but even more importantly most loved political and spiritual leaders he was only 2 years old when he was recognized as the future dalai lama the 14th dalai lama in fact only 6 years old when he began his monastic education and today as his holiness turns 75 we are extremely privileged to be with him here in dharamshala at his monastery a home away for whom not just for his holiness but for the tibetan people in exile for decades now and as we look back and ahead at his life and time we also have today with us in our special audience not just his followers but also people who just visit who come to visit dharamshala which has become an internationally recognized name because of his holiness and uh, of course uh, tourists and and foreigners and followers who come from all across the globe and like i said it is really a privilege to be with you this morning your holiness you know most of us mere mortals when we approach our birthday sometimes we feel happy but sometimes we feel a sense of fear that life is is slipping by we're getting old but you seem perennially young how do you how do you how do you how do you manage to stay so young hearted i think sufficient sleep <laughs> and then as a buddhist monk no dinner but very heavy breakfast and lunch so sufficient food <laughs> i think for physical these are important Uh, then another i think factor uh, nowadays according latest the scientific finding the healthy mind very important for healthy body so uh i think in my own case uh comparatively i think my mental state quite peaceful whenever i heard or face some problem firstly I always look from wider way, a more holistic way. That also very helpful to reduce mental anxiety. Many people describe you as a twinkly-eyed, always mm. as a twink. You know, there's a twinkle in your eyes. Mm. You're always laughing. You make us laugh. Mm. You make everybody who meets you feel mm. happier, mm. calmer. Mm. Do you always, uh, do you always really internally feel as positive as you appear? or do you feel the need to appear more positive than you feel for the sake of the millions who follow you everywhere i always look human being from president or king or prime minister up to beggar in my my in my eye same so whenever i meet these people i always uh, look at them as just another human being basically our brother sisters so that also you see creates uh more as a day peace in mind this not so in that level of mind not always occasionally sometimes i burst you get angry oh yes yes you get angry uh, oh yes if you ask some silly question oh no, <laughs> no. Re- repeat it today then i may lose my temper Now I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually did it happen in one one time in America. One New York Times columnist. Co- columnist. Let's see, one lady, uh, she asked me, of course, there are some other questions. And then she asked me uh, what I want, you see, the my sort of legacy about name in future. So, uh, then I told her, I'm Buddhist, Buddhist practitioner. should not think about my own name like that i answer then again the a uh, few other sort of uh, discussion then again she asked me that same question and i answer same way then after a few moment again she asked that <laughs> then i lost my temper <laughs> this is a this is a lesson for me to ask only once <laughs> <laughs> good 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 <laughs> but when you get angry mm. when you get angry uh, do you express it because you know in urban modern life mm. Mm. a lot of us get angry very quickly mm. you know we live high, live mm. high stress lives mm. we have short tempers mm. Mm. when you get angry how mm. do you control it because you know you're you're buddhist you're a spiritual oh. leader you see 
those uh, was the was the angry or irritation is it due to some small mistakes some people then I just express then finished nothing uh, then sometimes it's more serious sort of anger then sometimes I try to separate myself from anger then watch what's anger that emotion that immediately the strength of the anger diminish now tell me you spoke about the brain the human brain and you are seen to be somebody who has married a scientific temperament of inquisitiveness with spirituality which is very rare and i read somewhere that on your table you actually have a model of the human brain that you you know you keep mm. assembling and trying to understand it's very rare for a spiritual leader mm. to believe so much in science a scientific way of thinking and their sort of method to investigate what the reality is very important very useful since my childhood i always was the curiosity is i want to know well, what is that what is that and particularly when i was very young the british mission in lhasa the new person come they always brought me some toys <laughs> so therefore when i received information some new officials in the british mission in lhasa then i always excited <laughs> oh now what kind of new toy come <laughs> what was your what was so, your favorite so, toy <laughs> well, small some train train you know railway uh, small things like that at some cars like that in any way when i receive the such things a few moment i play then always i try to know what is the system moving i always open like that uh so actually many toys uh i think uh damaged by <laughs> by that by that way. <laughs> but you know one of the most uh, charming and compelling things about you your holiness is the fact that you still retain a child like if i can use mm. that phrase a child like innocence mm. a child like humor mm. yet you were only 2 years old mm. when you were recognized as the next dalai lama mm. do you sometimes uh, speaking as a human being and not as a holy man today mm. Mm. do you do you look back and feel that your childhood was lost no i think in any way yes some extent but anyway of course after 2 years or 3 years they recognize me as a dalai lama reincarnation uh but then uh, still with my parent and my elder brother younger brother and sister like that uh then i think about 5 years i reached lhasa then separate from my mother in summer time i think every day is a come occasionally i also went their home till i think some uh, few years and then my tutor the regent uh, put some restriction i should not go uh, my to home to meet your mother no. oh i little bit anger <laughs> did you but, show but 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 i as the i obey his sort of instruction i never so then, then i never is went there but otherwise sometimes you see as a child during my lesson not very successful my mood bad then <laughs> as soon as that lesson finish your mood good run away in my mother's place and spend some time there and then they would they, at the beginning i determined i never return oh for a lesson <laughs> but then about time come the, the next lesson. The afternoon lesson come then i slowly return <laughs> <laughs> so actually that sounds less like any other child who's traumatized by the exams <laughs> one way of course a little bit isolate from my mother from yeah. my uh, uh, parent but one way they always come uh, often then those my what say including sweepers mm. and some sort of official sort of what is it a servant for me yeah yeah See, of course, in in ceremony, or official sort of as a function, of course, they show great respect like that. But usually, when I play, uh, they do not 
Respect. Me, as the Dalai Lama. <laughs> oh, they often defeat me. Sometimes I cry. <laughs> I do not want to defeat it. <laughs> but they, they, they defeat like that. Uh, so they treated me uh, normal. Uh, normal, normal way. Yeah, including those sweepers. Uh, eventually become best my friend. Very uneducated, but very honest. Very sort of it, truthful. Trust, trust people. Your realistic approach where you have spoken about autonomy for, uh, for Tibet mm. instead of independence is the middle way, is the moderate approach. Mm. Yet it doesn't seem to have moved Beijing, it doesn't seem to have moved China. Do you sometimes regret at 75 your moderate political approach? No. No. From the government side, you say uh, no uh, for positive result. Uh, but Chinese people, people means all 1.3 billion, no, not saying that, uh, the, some intellectuals uh, and some professors and writers and some artists. Uh, uh, I think before Tiananmen massacre happened, very few. After that, more and more Chinese now showing their uh, sort of uh, concern and showing solidarity with us. Within the Chinese government officials, uh, many privately, personally express supporting our approach. So this is, I feel, uh, positive result. Sometimes you see the Chinese media is to describe me uh, Dalai Lama not teaching proper Buddhism. So it seems they know better. <laughs> <laughs> so, so therefore, that's the problem. So there, therefore, uh, the pattern problem, of course, created from outside. So we have to so find solution with them. So Chinese people sort of support. It's very essential. Uh, then also, outside world, including the United States, Indian government, European parliament, uh, all these influential sort of body, they also you see very easily support. You still, about, have, you still have faith in the United States? Because I remember when I met you last time, you had come back from your first visiting from Washington and President Obama had not met you on that mm. trip. Subsequently he did, but many people think Obama acted under Chinese pressure. So do you still have faith in, in Washington? Oh, of course. You weren't upset that he didn't meet America, you? Like, you didn't, oh, you weren't upset that he didn't meet himself. you? Yeah. When I met, uh, of course, before our physical meeting, I know through corresponding and also telephone, I know uh, a very good person. Then, after all, America, democratic country. Finally, the both houses are very important. Then that also, the public, public sort of thinking usually democratic country, the public sort of thinking reflect in the parliament, in the houses. Their thinking reflect on the administration. In America, in the public level, and also both houses, very, very sort of sympathetic, very sort of supportive. Uh, then this country also, Indian government. Uh, our stand, they can easily support like that. But the Indian government did not let you make a political speech when you went to Tawang in Arunachal Pradesh. They said you were only going to go as a spiritual leader. Don't you feel that sometimes India is giving into pressure from the Chinese because India is trying to form its own parallel strategic relationship with China? And doesn't that disturb you? Of course, in many years, uh, in the past, uh, I usually you see they respond you see, when people ask about the government of India's sort of attitude or help, and I always say they. Those fields which government of India you see, can help, the Indian government is provided maximum help in education field and rehabilitation and some other field like that. And then political field, government of India sort of attitude or policy, uh, China in general and generally and particularly uh, Tibet case, 
usually I describe over cautious. It happened. It's understandable. But recent years, the government of India, I think many other sort of factor, is it now stand more firm, like my recent visit in Taiwan, like that. Well, you remain, you remain optimistic about Tibet. We are going to take a quick break. We're then going to open uh, this floor to the many followers and questioners uh, who are here. So we'll be back with a special program on His Holiness's 75th birthday in just a few minutes. Welcome back. We're in conversation with His Holiness the Dalai Lama on the occasion of his 75th birthday in Dharamshala at his monastery. So it's a very special occasion for us as well. And we're carrying today from Delhi a special message uh, first, Your Holiness, uh, from one of India's best known photographers, Raghu Rai, mm. uh, who has spent a long time mm. uh, photographing you and following you around and loves you a lot. And this is the message uh, that Raghu Rai has sent for you. Your Holiness, many happy returns of the day on your 75th birthday. And you may look as handsome and as strong like the Himalayas that you've already, you always look. You see, you are a highly spiritual and evolved person. So my question to you is, that please connect with the supreme energy for our sake and find out when are we going to go back to Tibet so that I can travel back with you in your homeland and photograph you all over again and my best wishes again and lots of love your holiness Thank you. do you believe that you will ever go back to Tibet in this lifetime Oh, yes. You still oh, believe yes. that? Yes, yes. Yes. Tibetan spirit inside Tibet, uh, in spite of so many sort of new change or new development, and also brainwash or torture in various methods, Tibetan spirit never change. Very strong, forever. Uh, then, on top of that, number of Chinese, uh, according to some information, over 200 millions of Buddhists in China, including many party members, high officials, uh, outwardly communist, atheist, deep inside Buddhist. <laughs> uh, but can I ask you a difficult question? Do you ever feel, because while you are a holy leader, a spiritual leader, you're also human, I think, mm. at, at heart. Mm. Do you sometimes feel that on this issue of going back to Tibet, for you or your people, mm. Time is not on your side anymore. How soon, if you ask, then difficult question. In no, your no, lifetime? No, nobody, nobody knows. In your lifetime, you think? Uh, next to five years, ten years, I think fifteen years, things will change definitely. Yeah. Huh? You joked once that to retire was also your human right. Oh, you, yes. You, see, you, 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 oh, really? you joked about that. Uh, since, <laughs> since 2001. Since we already achieved elected political leadership of our establishment here, uh, my position is semi-retired position. So now I'm looking forward to complete retirement. Do you think the Tibet movement will remain the same if you do retire? Because there are many people, mm. young Tibetans mm. today, mm. who feel that your message of non-violence mm has actually not worked because it has not bothered to, it has not managed to move hmm. a cold, unfeeling hmm. government in Beijing. The difference is, is you see, the, uh, among Tibetan, like youth organization and some other organization, you see, they want complete freedom, complete independence. Yes. So here are differences. Now some kind of debate going on among our community. That now number is growing and we also sometimes find it difficult to explain because it's a failure inside Tibet 
like that. But finally, majority of them support our existing sort of stand. So like that, this will go continuously. So if the majority opinion within the community changes, uh, uh, you would be willing to change your position? Have to. So if the majority position said, we don't I'm want autonomy... Uh, I'm not a dictator. <laughs> Why do you want to retire then? What would this movement be age, without you? Age. And also, you see, we're fully committed about democracy. And also, this is the national struggle. People should carry the res responsibility. Should not rely on one individual. Have you set a time frame mentally for this retirement from your political no, role? No. What would it depend on? Oh. One little difficulty is, you see, people, too much emotion, too much expectation. People so, won't let you retire. So that's a little bit sort of difficult. <laughs> but, but, but then, of course, uh, but then also, you see, finally, uh, I'm a human being, so I also have the right for certain my right, basic right. So retirement is your human right, but I don't think it's happening. But there's so many people here who've come to listen to you uh, today, and let's start taking some questions. We have uh, Catherine uh, Levine, if you can just... You've indicated that you do have hope for Tibet's future. Um, what are the main um, sources of hope for you, for that future? Truth. Truth. Honest. Transparent. Our voice here, very weak, very small, but people take trust. And you have never, in all these years, lost hope? No. Of course, some disappointment occasionally come, but basically, as I mentioned earlier, we believe truth. We have another question from Jeremy Russell. Um, Your Holiness, I've heard you say uh, you expect to outlive the Chinese Communist Party. I wonder if you still feel that way and whether you feel the change in the Chinese Communist Party would be gradual or sudden? Well, few occasions these days, uh, half joke, half serious, uh, the Communist Party, uh, of course, in spite of a lot of destructions, but some positive thing also they've done, and particularly in early period, when real revolution sort of movement, you see, uh, uh, moving or taking place, they really, totally dedicated people. When I was in China, 1954, 50, uh, 54, 55, uh, of course, I met several times Chairman Mao and some, all those top leaders. And also I met is a number of top leaders in different provinces when I touring. All of these people, totally dedicated for well-being of the people. So I really admire. So my sort of impression is so good about this, the Marxist, Marxist party. So I offer, I want to join Communist Party. <laughs> hmm? But then they say, uh, no hurry. <laughs> so I think they know eventually their Communist Party will be or should they spoil or <laughs> so better to not, not join, I think. So, so in any way, at that time, really uh, party, wonderful party, really people's party, really working class people's party. Now today, no longer that. Do you still think of yourself as a Marxist? Yes. You're still a Marxist? Still a Marxist. As far as econo social economy theory is concerned, I'm Marxist. Maybe that will give you some membership to the Communist Party of China. Now, unfortunately, Chinese Communist Party is no longer Communist Party. It's capitalist. Oh, capitalist, <laughs> capitalist Party. <laughs> I now want to hear from one of uh, uh, His Holiness's oldest uh, friends, Professor Sharma, who's also been the former principal of uh, the Dharamshala College. And tell us something about him that none of us know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very difficult question to answer. My most memorable moment was when a friend rang me up to say that there was a very bad news and what was the news that his oldness was leaving Dharmsala. And in the afternoon I arrived here at his oldness's office but his oldness was very busy because a lot of hundreds of foreign journalists were there but I sent back the message 
that I would not leave the place <laughs> unless his own nurse allowed me to meet him. And he was kind enough that his secretary, then secretary, Tenzing Geshela, he sent word to me that his holiness would meet you. I went to meet his holiness. As usual, he was standing at the threshold. I will not reveal to the public what he said to me when both of us waited for a second at the threshold before entering the room. Only I wish, at that moment, I wish, had wished, like Sita, for the ground under me to open up and then I could go inside it and disappear. And a stage came when I started crying like a baby. His oldness got up, I got up, his oldness embraced me like anything and promised that he would not leave Dharamsala. I hope you are never leaving Dharamsala and if you do, it should only be to go back to Tibet. Yes, the local people at that time, when trouble starts, trouble happens. I was in America. So then someone asked me, then I expressed, if local people do not want us to remain here, then I have, we have to leave. Uh, then when I reach here, some of my sort of old friends come, uh, especially with this person, <laughs> very much emotionally, emotionally uh, yeah. asked me, uh, till the day leaving for Tibet, That's right. please remain here. Uh, I so hope you I, never I, thought I, about I, it I, since then. I very much sort of moved. And another is Dharamshala veteran, Ajay Singh. Uh, Ajay Singh. Oh. Every place that you go, you spread so much joy. For this to continue, would you not please appoint a successor now that you are with us in this world? As early as 69, one of my official and sort of formal sort of statement, publicly I stated, this... Uh, sort of century-old institution, whether should it continue or not, up to Tibetan people. Last few years, we also, you see, uh, discuss about my successor mm. or the how to keep the, this institution. So, uh, the topic already now there, but not yet sort of, or say the con concrete sort of decision, not yet. You said once oh. that you believe that even the institution of the Dalai Lama oh. could fade away. Yes. Do, you, do you really believe that? Yes, believe. Buddha himself, there is no Buddhist institution, no Nagarjuna institution, but their teaching remains still, not organization. Of course, I cannot compare with these great sort of leaders, but some of my thought is my books remain after me, about a few hundred years, I didn't remain. When I met you last time, no. you said, I am not a God-man. Oh, yes. I am a human being. <laughs> no question. All right. Next question is from Francisco, who is here from Argentina. Yes, if we can just huh? get you the mic. Yes. Hello, Your Holiness. Um, so my family is from Argentina, and I've been studying here for six months. And in Argentina, we have a long history of military dictatorships and throughout South America. Can there be a positive benefit to having a military? At a certain uh, occasion, they have to, uh, better to take their sort of uh, control of or uh, responsibility. But then once you see they got these things, then they hold that, don't think about the reality, hmm. about democracy, just to think about their own power. So military uh, is needed for a purpose, but they have to let go of power. They can't... Mm. Short period as an emergency measure, but never is it remain for forever. That's, I think, again related with moral principle. All right, we have uh, Bhuvnesh Thube who runs a school in Dharamshala. Bhuvnesh, go ahead. Ahinsa is part of human values. Yes. Now, how much relevant is the doctrine of Ahinsa in today's times of intense violence? I think violence in global level, like including or say the uh, September 11th event, 9/11. Uh, mm. uh, some some pe some media people uh, ask. Uh, that I, I mentioned these events, this tragedy, unbelievable sort of tragedy, uh, its own causes and conditions, and cause 
its own causes, own causes, own causes. So these things may relate with uh, last one or two centuries. That means colonial rule. And some of these, and some of the, eventually some of these countries, you see, their oils, these things uh, exploit or used by those industrialized nations. So their own people remain poor. These also, ultimately, the moral ethics or the Kasai, So at that time, I expressed that we, sh in order to counter these things, we have to think two levels. One level, immediate, that the leaders, leaders is taking, ca taking care, whether right method or wrong method. But we have to think long term. Long term. Long term. Yeah. As proper education, or promotion of non-violence, ahimsa. Your enemy, even enemy, also part of you. Your future depends on them. So destruction of your neighbor, destruction of your enemy, is destruction of yourself. So therefore, the ahimsa, that, mean, that does not mean no longer any problem, any conflict. Conflict there. Sometimes I jokingly, peep, jokingly tell people, so long, human smart brain remain there, some problems always remain there. <laughs> we create our own problems. Oh, so, if we really want to build a peaceful world, then human beings must go. <laughs> <Where we So, laughs> so, so long human beings there, and particularly those human beings with more shine here, more sort of experience, more visions. <laughs> so sometimes these people, you see, create more problems. <laughs> I think including myself now. <laughs> All right, Jessica, Jessica Sanchi. My question is, uh, do you feel the Obama administration is too lenient in their policies toward China? At the initially, a little bit cautious, after Copenhagen, I think a new administration gaining more experience. So, but this is just the beginning. So you have to sort of wait and see. You don't think he's cozying up to China? I don't think. When I met you, see, Obama, I remind him, Indian Prime Minister's sort of expression. India, an economy field, little sort of what they, behind than China. But India also have some other fundamental values. Uh, democracy, rule of law, the free press, transparent. So I, I mentioned to the Obama, the Indian Prime Minister, usually I discard our Prime Minister, because now 51 years in this country. <laughs> So I consider myself as a son of India. So that expression, some Chinese officials furious. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. Now here, major portion of my life is spent here. I always is telling. Do you, do you feel uh, Indian now, half Indian? Half Indian, half Tibetan? Something like that? <laughs> if you open my brain, brain. Oh, then I think 100% uh, Indian. <laughs> because my teacher, all these uh, Nalanda masters, Usually I describe Indian, Indians are guru, we are chela. And also, you see, I sometimes, uh, recent years, I mentioned, we are quite reliable chela. <laughs> because, you know, uh, once, eighth century, Nalanda thought, Nalanda thought of Rasa Day, brilliant their thought, concept, reached the bed. We kept, during those centuries, their own homeland, a lot of destructions. Now, Nalanda just ruined nothing. During this period, when our guru a little bit suffer, we chela kept all your treasures intact. So we are quite a reliable chela. <laughs> <laughs> I want to play for you now another message that we've carried uh, from Delhi, uh, hmm. from dancer Sonal Mansik. Oh. I offer my prayers and salutations to His Holiness the Dalai Lama. I think I was a school going kid when in a taffeta frock and he was a 16 year old and he and the then Panchan Lama were visiting India, Bombay in 1993.
I showed him this picture and he laughed in his typical hearty way and hugged me. You know, just to be hugged by him, to be enveloped, uh, you are in a universe. I, I go in a tizzy. And it's like going into the deep waters of the Ganga. I, I can't describe it. So, Your Holiness, you are Amit Shatru. You are Yoga Purush. You are what you are. I want to wish you many, many healthy, fruitful, laughter filled years where you spread joy and beauty to all. Uh, my one little question to you, how do you do it with all the problems that you have faced all your life? Fantastic. My humblest namaskars to you. Thank you. Thank you. There is no other choice. <laughs> if you rely drug or alcohol, it's because of the self-destruction. So, we have wonderful human mind. Uh, which have the ability to think reasons or fact. So use that maximum way. Then you become realistic. Extraordinary your optimism, but we do need to take another break. In the last segment, we still have some questions left. Okay. And we want to ask you, uh, Your Holiness, to look back at your life and to share some of your personal memories oh. and personal landmarks with us. And that's coming up in just a couple of minutes. conversation with His Holiness the Dalai Lama in Dharamshala at his monastery on the occasion of his 75th birthday. And we've been talking to people who've known the Dalai Lama for a very long time. We now want to play for you, Your Holiness, a message from somebody who used to be your liaison officer, who knew you long mm. back, mm. Uh, Inder Malik. No. Uh, uh, Inder Malik. I know. And this message from Inder Malik from Delhi. Holiness, I am extremely grateful to you because during my long stay, I got so much knowledge and wisdom not only from you but for your reverend tutor, senior tutor and junior tutor, that I could write a book on you. My book, The Laila and the Ma Tibet for whom you wrote the foreword and you inaugurated it in 1984, became a hit and I became a writer. Divinity was writ large on his face. Now that was my first impression in 1962 and now I have been seeing him for the last 50 years after that. The glow has been expanding and expanding. Now I have the pleasant duty in wishing you a long, long and a very, very healthy life because you are required by the whole world. I don't think I have ever met a spiritual leader, I'm not saying holy man or God man, just a spiritual or a political leader who is so loved by so many people. How does it not go to your head? Self-discipline. So, Self-discipline. Uh -huh. And there's so are sort of verses and also you see, uh, I sort of recite that every day. That verse is mentioned, if you sort of uh, respect by everybody uh, and praising you, you must think you are the lowest person. I always practice that. All right, Tracy Christmas from England. This is a question from Tracy, yes. Uh, my question was regarding the selection process of um, future Dalai Lamas. Um, if you think that the traditional um, process will still be able to continue, sort of given, in, given what's happening in China and what happened with the Panchen Lama. Unfortunately, those uh, Chinese communist hardliner, you see, they are quite expert to create unnecessary problems. <laughs> Look, now two pension lama, one pension lama, official pension lama, one pension lama, 
pendulum of Tibetan heart. So such things create more complication, more resentment to the Chinese government. Oh. So st uh, still seems as if they are not yet learned these things. So they, uh, if I, I die, say within uh, this year, most probably the Chinese, you see, appoint or choose one boy, uh, one official, one official Dalai Lama. And then, then if Tibetan and and concerns of the people really want uh, to have another sort of Dalai Lama reincarnation, then they will choose. What is your own mind? Do you would you like to see somebody appointed in your lifetime? Oh. I have not much concern about these things. You don't. So, so, so sometimes I, I express it. Chinese communist seems more concerned about Dalai Lama institution than me. Mm -hmm. Political reason, of course. You know, silly, uh, silly thinking like that. So it doesn't matter. And also the practical level, no hurry. I'm quite he healthy. <laughs> <laughs> If I, if, if it not takes the suicide way, oh, suicide, then, then my healthy, is, my body is considered very healthy. So another, I think, 10, 10 20 years, I think no, no problem. Okay, 10, 20, so then, then. Years, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, now Catherine Schwitt. Tashila, Your Holiness, and happy birthday. Oh, Please, you. not just 10 or 20 years, stay another 75 years. That too long. <laughs> That's unrealistic, I think. <laughs> About a hundred. That's, I think, possible. Hundred is possible? Mm. Century mark. Some prediction predicted by one great Tibetan master about 200 years ago. Uh, some of his predictions seem to be related with me. So in that prediction, mentioned that person's life, because of longitude. Oh, 113 mentioned that and early 60 one occasion I also some one dream you see indicate my lifespan lifespan where I spent 113 so two years ago I, I, I received that sort of prediction about 200 years ago you see go same so then I thought maybe and according my sort of, well, one sort of beautiful sort of story, I usually say telling people, in big audience, I usually telling, uh, among the audience, some people may have some kind of, how say they, uh, believe uh, Dalai Lama has some kind of healing power. So, as far as that is concerned, 2008, I think October, I went through surgery, so that scientifically proved Dalai Lama has no healing power. <laughs> clear, isn't it? I think it's quite clear. Your Holiness, there's been some uh, discussions about full ordination for nuns in oh. the Tibetan Buddhist tradition. Oh. And there's some obstacles to this, which you, Your Holiness described at the conference in Hamburg in 2007 yes. as uh, old-fashioned thinking in the Tibetan oh. society, that they won't accept this full ordination for nuns. Last year, Your Holiness mentioned that you might be reincarnated as a woman, and the next Dalai Lama might even be a woman. So how does Your Holiness think the Tibetan society would accept a female Dalai Lama when they are having troubles accepting fully ordained nuns? No, not, not that way. You see, the uh, Tibetan uh, the bhikshunis, the highest ordination of Buddhist nun, some hesitation, not... Uh, not due to public sort of reluctance, no. Oh. Public, of course, the Buddha himself gave the same right, bhikshu, bhikshuni. So everybody have the right see, to achieve that. Uh, now question is the technical one. Technical. The Vinaya vow should take according Vinaya rule. So then, uh, then, then re next reincarnation, uh, if the circumstances uh, is such, the female reincarnation more effective, uh, then and carry uh, the, uh, the, the true spiritual traditional spiritual way, 
if they found like that way, I don't know problem. Okay, uh, Swati, Swati, where are you? Yeah, I'm a psychologist by hmm. profession. My question is, how do you deal with the trauma, confusion, and conflict in the minds of new Tibetan generation who are growing up in India with the world's ambitions and desires? Tibetan younger generation who born in this country with Tibetan atmosphere still much more thinking like Tibetan. And those young Tibetan, now you know, those young Tibetan who come from Tibet, they grown up in tense situation, so much short temper and more violent nature. It happened. So now here, Tibetan generally, who bringing, uh, bringing up in Tibetan community, comparatively still better. But still we are not Kazoda. Uh, we need a lot of work. Well, I want to end with one of your friends, uh, also Professor Chamanlal Gupta. If you oh, can yeah. share a personal story with us, uh, like Professor Sharma. We want to know things that we don't know already. I came in contact with His Holiness in 1999 for the first time. It was his birth birthday and we came to him from Bharat Tibet Sahayog Manch. After having talks with him, I asked him, how is it that you are a Buddhist and firm believer in Ahinsa, that is non-violence, and yet you take meat and so many others also do the same. How do you compromise this situation? And secondly, I asked him, Ki, okay, what are your shortcomings? He mentioned two. That is, my love for watches. Where's the watch? Oh, there it is. <laughs> and meat eating. So, when we were going out, he just caught hold of my arm and said, ask the photographer, you come. We, we will have a, a photograph with him. And I have that photograph with, with His Holiness in my study. And that is the most precious treasure that I ever will have in my life. Thank you. Your Holiness, do you still think watches and meat eating are your only two flaws? And as flaws go, they are pretty, uh, no. pretty innocent. <laughs> uh. My is uh, uh, so fond watch. That is one of my weakness. <laughs> but the first of the present watch from President Roosevelt. Wow. And how old were oh, you then? You must have been a child. 1942. Yes. Hmm? I was then seven years old. Here you see one quite, uh, quite strange sort of story. Uh, with that watch and one What's it? A uh, sil uh, silver made uh, old or it? A sheep. Then one letter. As a seven-year-old boy, no interest about le that letter. <laughs> Only that watch. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a silver sort of sheep. I put on on a sort of a small sort of what's it? A casa, a pond, small pond. It's it's sand. Thank oh, <laughs> too heavy. <laughs> no interest. Uh, then only that watch, and that watch quite was shameful. Uh, I, as soon as I received the information, the delegation when they reach uh, Lhasa, the British mission there, I received the information from our foreign ministry's officials who speak English. Uh, so he informed me, I said they are present. As I mentioned earlier, I asked what kind of sort of a present. Huh? Then, then I was told it's a one watch. So then, before formal meeting, I ordered to ask, bring that watch. <laughs> <laughs> How bad, isn't it? <laughs> that boy, too much greed. <laughs> so, the latter... You didn't care of about course, uh, Didn't of course, care about I never saw <laughs> till my meeting Obama this time. He kindly you see, copy that original letter, letter oh, yeah. for me. Then, so after Christian Britta, 
since 42 now to 2010 oh 2010 Christmas 70 years later 70 years later I saw the letter <laughs> did, did Obama give you a watch no no <laughs> and then about the, the taking meat here you know there's sort of so, some kind of contradictions but uh, in Vinaya no prohibition eating meat one time I asked I discussed with I mean this sort of subject with one monk from Sri Lanka many years ago he mentioned Buddhist monk neither vegetarian nor non-vegetarian whatever he get should he accept so that's the principle so then depending case I think practically uh, some of the removed uh, high, uh, the northern part of Tibet no, vegeta no vegetable grows yeah oh, very difficult so that's practical reason however uh, my age about 13 14 all Tibetan official festi festival previously a lot of meat I changed all changed to vegetarian, uh, vegetarian food then 59 come to India uh, around 60 65 I become vegetarian I give up why did uh, you give it up hmm? why better healthier or philosophical reason? philosophical reason uh, then I think 67 I think 67 or 60, 66 or 67 uh, I develop what's a day gallbladder hepatite oh so whole my body is it become yellow so later I joke uh, then at that time I almost become like living Buddha whole body yellow oh I also yellow and the nail also yellow oh so then uh, Tibetan physician as well as the uh, allopathic physician is advise me now should take meat so that start uh, again that, the, back to original the diet uh, meantime all our institution monastic institution in South India uh, and also Namjil monastery and here my own sort of kitchen common kitchen now uh, serve only vegetarian food at 75 oh. Do you have any regrets? Anything you would have wanted to do differently? Regrets? Small, small things. Of course, almost every day. Like? Like. Uh, I think just here, too hot. <laughs> so That's our fault. My sort of this, this, uh, this garment, uh, this garment, uh, maybe one thinner one, maybe, maybe nice. <laughs> That's a minor regret. Uh, major point, I think, during my study period uh, 10 around 10 years uh, I rather lazy I often used to telling people the way I study at the young age under threat of weep <laughs> by my uh, tutor you know the, the senior tutor yes. very sort of yes. ka, yes. Uh, stern when I young, he never showed smile, and he kept one weak. Mm. At that time, you see, his father, my elder brother, my elder brother, and myself, you see, studied together. So two weeps there, one normal weep, one yellow weep. Suppose that yellow weep, suppose you see, what's a, suppose what's the holy holy weep. So for holy student, for. Uh, holy, holy whip is something relevant. So then I have quite sufficient sort of brain. Holy whip may not bring holy pain, <laughs> just ordinary pain. <laughs> Therefore, I afraid is that whip. So that sometimes I feel a little bit regret. Then otherwise, I think in the political field or some other sort of the field. Since I took the responsibility about 16 age, 16 year old age, 
since then till now major decision no regret well may you go from strength to strength thank you at 75 it's been an absolute privilege no no no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I have to i think if we can just have a round of applause in the meantime for Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank This you means much. a lot to me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.